What is happening, YouTube? It's Matt Fairclaw. Thank you so much for watching this YouTube channel. My name is Matt. My company is called the DeRosa Group, and we are a real estate investing company that's dedicated to education and teaching you guys how to build yourself into awesome real estate investment companies. We've got all kinds of cool stuff on this channel, like property tours, mentorship Monday. If you guys want to ask a real estate question, all you got to do is email it to help me at derosagroup.com. Help me at derosagroup.com, and I will answer that question right right here on this YouTube channel, right here for you guys to learn from. It'll get broadcast right out and we'll give you a little shout out and everything. We also do interviews with industry professionals and people that are friends of mine, people that I've met, people that we have at cool events like PodMax. And so today I have somebody who's new that I've met named Jamie O'Connor. Hi. And the question that, hi Jamie, the question <laughs> we want to talk to Jamie about today is why real estate investors need a brand. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, Jamie, my friend, I go to a lot of real estate investing events and I meet people that give me either a business card straight up or write down an email address or whatever and it's got like at Gmail um, where they've got like a cell phone number on there or something like that and they're really you know I don't use the word amateur, but they're coming off like they don't have a brand. I personally think it that's looks an, amateur. I think I, that person that's an yeah. amateur move, you know, it's an yeah. Amy, an Amy kind of thing. That that uh, to really just kind of like it's like tickets to dip in one toe in. Yeah. Um, every successful real estate investor that I know that's successful that's got a that's got a large uh, company or is doing a lot of deals has a brand, right? Like the Derosa Group, you yeah. know. Um, so talk to me about what. Like first, of all, let me start. Like, I'll bottom line it all the way down what's mm -hmm. a, you ready yeah i'm what's ready a, what's a brand whoa oh, oh. Man. all the way right, foundation right, man right the foundation yeah. what's a brand what is yeah. that well a brand is how you're representing yourself in the public market in a way that will be memorable it's how you're seeing right it's how you're seeing yeah. yeah and you want people to remember you and i yes. think there's a lot of ways to to do that but you know showing that you are serious about what you're doing not just having a gmail account or the cheapest cards you could just order from up the block um those things make a difference yeah. they make a difference in how you're seen and how you can be represented how you're perceived and i think that if you really yeah. start owning your brand certain things can be affiliated with your brand you know i mean be, some people that i meet that know this youtube channel that know me know of captain america <laughs> my favorite superhero <laughs> you know awesome i and love it so i also got him up there you know um and that's he's become kind of like part of my brand yeah and then it's one of those things because um yeah and there's a whole story of why i love captain america ask ask me during help me at durosa group.com and i'll answer that nobody's ever asked me that one but i will go there if you guys want me to anyway um the things that you don't even realize are going to become part of your brand yeah become part of your brand yeah you know um and that's so it's all part of your brand and the thing is that you guys have a brand whether you know it or not a that's brand true. is how people view you and if you're the guy that's going to show the guy or gal that's going to show up in disheveled clothes at the real estate and Working event that's going to be you know kind of not looking people in the eye and just kind of standing in the corner or whatever <laughs> yeah. then that's your brand that's yeah. how you're seen absolutely and at gmail at gmail dot com address that you email address that you got that is how you're viewed yeah and your that view may be this is not someone I take seriously I, right. totally and you know the thing is is it's it's very easy to go on and and buy a domain name and set it up through Gmail and and I have it's any, about twenty thirty thousand dollars to set those things yeah up, something right? like that. 20, no, 30 or maybe, dollars? maybe 20, 30 dollars. <laughs> actually, I'm sorry, I left the thousand part. The thousand part I should have said. Yeah. It's, it's, it's likely less than a hundred bucks yeah. to do these things. There is yeah. no reason. I remember I'm, I'm dating myself, but I remember when I first got old, when I first uh, got into this business, it was thousands to set up a website and a email address and, yeah. uh, and business you cards. Oh, you want the business cards for you? And the big you had to have a trifold brochure. Yeah. Back in that day, right? You had to have a brochure because you're gonna hand that out, right? Now, yeah. It's just it sounds crazy. People don't have business cards now. They just have a website it's and true. they and they do have digital marketing to get a hold of each other and stuff like that. But um, at the end of the day, it is nothing to have a branding package done. So one more thing about branding. I think that if you have a solid brand, it really acts as either a repellent for your company, like, oh, I don't want to do business with that person, but hopefully you get a good brand um, and, you, and it's a magnet for you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, you know, I think one of the things branding scares people about is that they think they have to spend all this time and money to do it, but yeah. you really don't. You like don't. you don't have to spend a lot of time getting a domain name. You don't have to spend a lot of money on a logo. It can be very simple. Mm -hmm. You just have to be representing yourself in a way that is 
attracting the people you want. And I think that's actually the core piece is who do you want to be attracting? Who do you want to be talking to? And then build it around that. And it doesn't have to be big and beautiful. It just has to be something. Well, let's, and let's go there. So I'll be devil's advocate. I'm going to put on the hat of the person that's watching this going like, you know, I'm not Matt anymore. I'm I'm, I'm somebody else. And I'm saying like, I don't need to do business with anybody. I I don't want to be attracted. I don't want people to get attracted to me. I just want to find, I just want to do deals. Yeah. I should buy real estate. I don't need well, who are you, you know, doing business deals partners with? and everything like that. What was that? <laughs> who are you doing deals right. with? Who are you doing deals with? <laughs> right? You might not. I mean, listen, you might not need to be tr- attracting like contractors and plumbers yeah. and people to do your rehab work, but right. You've got to find the deals. You right? got to find the deals and you're working with people on those deals. Well, okay. Devil's advocate. Ready? Here it is okay. again. Here it is. I'm going to keep throwing. I'm keep throwing. Ready right? for you it. ready? Okay. So I'm that like, well, I just found my deals in the MLS. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't need a brand because I just buy my deals on the MLS um, and that's the only place I can find deals. What do you say? What do you got? Well, I would argue there's definitely deals that are not there. Th- there's deals that are not on the MLS? <laughs> oh my God, that's really? crazy. How could a brand assist me in getting not MLS deals? Well, if you have a brand and I would, I would say brand in being something people trust. Yes. Trustworthy brand. A trustworthy brand, which isn't just pretty colors and logos, but mm-hmm. all of those, those other are pretty pieces. colors, by the way. Yeah, they yeah, are. Pretty yeah. Pretty. Um, <laughs> then you you start to create relationships in a network and yeah. people that want to turn to you and think of you when they see something that maybe isn't publicly on the market. Yeah, right. Well, there's a few people that I've seen that are that are successful. If you're buying a lot of wholesale properties or distressed properties, mm-hmm. you buy uh, you put out there the brand that like okay. Um, I'm the company you go to, not my company, but this company you would go to if you were in distress, we can offer you relief. Mm-hmm. You know, we can offer you solutions. It's a great branding we message. Can, right. We can offer you an out. I can make life better. Yeah. You're under distress. I understand that. I'm sorry to hear that, but I can make it better. Right. Yeah. That's what the brand says, right? Because yeah. the brand says a lot of things. And so that's how that person gets a phone call. If like if somebody's losing their property for closure to yeah. closure, yeah. the, that, that brand going to get the phone call. You know, Johnny at gmail.com is likely not going to get that phone call. Absolutely. And I would argue Mm -hmm. too, that by having a little bit of a brand and knowing who you want to talk to, what kinds of things you want to work on. So let's just go with your distress example. So this is what I am going to focus on. It allows you to be in people's minds in exactly that. So you're the one that they think of. It also allows you to have an exact point of what you want to be talking about when you're at these networking events yeah. and when you're potentially creating content. It helps you online. stay focused. Yeah. A brand helps you stay focused <laughs> with your message. <laughs> Whoa. Huh. Never heard of such a thing. So which can be a lot more lucrative. So, okay, let's maybe you got me sold. The brand can help me find more <laughs> deals, right? Yeah. Well, I need money. Like, how do I find, you know, I, I, I don't, I need people to invest money with me or lenders that believe in me. How can a brand help that happen? I trustworthiness and authority for huh. sure. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. 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 So investors can find me and and that now like we have a, a vibrant YouTube channel. So um, because we put out a lot of stuff and content on YouTube, that that has allowed us to put out a brand of transparency. That's one thing the Derosa Group tries I love to do that. is our brand is transparency. You can see through what we're doing because we try we don't try and hide anything. We want to put all the conversations out on YouTube, us walking through properties like hey yeah. we screwed up. This is a mistake we made. Let me highlight it right here and show it and rub it and mm-hmm. rub it on the face and then show you guys about it too. We don't pull any punches um, at the at the DeRosa Group and we show the inside of what real estate investing looks like and that brand has allowed us to attract investors because they get that we're you know transparent, we're trustworthy, right? Yes, yeah. absolutely. That is actually a huge, huge piece to me of, of what brand and branding is. Yep. What you guys are doing is exactly that. Like I said, it's not, it doesn't have to be a beautiful logo. Quite frankly, you could literally have just the words Oops. and it doesn't have to be a logo. It doesn't have to yeah. be pretty colors. Doing things that put yourself out there as an authority that create value for people and trust and authenticity, that is the important piece of branding. Yeah. That's what makes the difference and sets you apart from somebody else so that, you know, a real estate investor 
can be picky about yeah. where they want to put their money and who they want to put their money with. And just brand gets you noticed, right? So yeah. um, bringing it back to just change, well, not bring it back, change gears a little bit. I also know, uh, Jamie, that your company does a little bit of online marketing stuff mm-hmm. that supports companies, you know, not just real estate investors, but supports a lot of companies doing their online marketing, right? Yeah. So, Tell me more. I'll stop being the devil's advocate, pretending like the, <laughs> the, the contrarian throwing rocks, right? Tell me why. Like, why is online marketing um, important right now? I mean, not that like you know, not that like companies should just go put an ad in the paper or a billboard up or whatever. We all get online marketing um, is there, but why, uh, as a business, is so important to do it? And what are some strategies that companies should take on when they do online marketing? Yeah. Well, there's so much now today. I mean, r- the reality is, is that digital marketing is now synonymous with marketing. It's yeah. there, it's not a totally different factor. It is the way to market right. today. It's just marketing and the digital marketing. It, no, that's yeah, and yeah. you know, yeah. I would say even up to two years ago, that was still the case. But mm-hmm. today, it really is the pr- primary vehicle for you to be able to get your word out in a lot of ways. I think holistically, you can still look at the other pieces. They're all a part of the puzzle. Mm-hmm. But today, we have access to digital both in the free capacity, like a YouTube channel, yep. as you're doing today. Um, Facebook pages, Facebook lives is a growing place that you can do it. LinkedIn, yep. where this particular industry Social is media. really, really strong. Yep. Um, and then when you get into the paid side of things, there is such an incredible amount of targeting and deep data that exists Mm -hmm. that allows you to find the exact people you want to market to. So if it's selling a property that you have, or if it's, if you have a apartment complex and you're trying to rent it out, there are so many ways to take advantage of both the free aspects and the paid aspects. And on the paid side, which is, which is my large focus, um, It can be so lucrative because we can actually see the data of how many leads are coming in for a company. We can see how people are reacting and what personas. So like we've described exactly who we want to be talking to. We can build that person through interest targeting and find them exactly and get your message and your ad in front of them. Now with that, to break out and be different from every other person in real estate, you need to be providing value and yeah. authority and trust like and you guys do here. Brand. Your brand has to be transparent. Yep. You got to see be like, Oh, I see that brand. I see what they're doing. Yeah. yeah I, I get their message. It's, yeah. it's a, it's a uh, brand I can read. I can understand. It's a coherent brand. Um, in that. So I did going back to more specifics of what Jamie said, it's amazing what you can target in marketing. Now. It's so incredible. I can put an ad out there and say, okay, I want, I only want, um, you know, women between the age of 18 and 28 that live in Albuquerque, New Mexico that are fans of Danielle Steele novels that drive <laughs> Volkswagen Beetles. I only want them to see this ad. And guess what? You could be that tight. You can. Yeah. yeah. Fact, I mean, you know, there's probably all four of them are going to look at that article, you know. But like, <laughs> that's pretty narrow. You can, you can get that that narrow, for sure. that granular. But let's say you're marketing a home you have for sale. Mm-hmm. You can say, okay, well, likely this home has three bedrooms, two baths, probably going to be a starter home. Um, um, for young millennial family. Okay. I'm going to market it between people that are 25, 35 that live within a 30 mile radius of that property that, you know, have some other type of, maybe there's two acres of land. So maybe somebody that shows any interest in gardening, you know, I'm going to yes. market the property just to those people. Yep. Um, and that's, and you know what, what's great about that. And you might think like, Oh, big brother's watching and look at all the data they have on us and everything like that. <laughs> yeah. You know, he's watching. But from you, a marketing standpoint, that is amazing. Big, big brother is watching, but you know what? I don't, I I'm not a conspiracy theorist yeah. around it. I think that Big Brother's watching simply to make our lives better. I like and to believe that. It well. enables me that I don't have to hear about that three bedroom, two bath house because I already got a house. I'm not 35. I'm not uh-huh. 25 to 32. You don't have to see that no, advertising. But I don't. I don't drive Volkswagen Beetle or any of that kind of stuff. <laughs> so it's not. I'm not that target. Yeah. So the ads that I see are really more geared towards me. And some people think that that means that like the government's inside your head and putting ads <laughs> out there for things that you need. I mean, maybe, but, but it's like, well, or maybe not, or maybe, maybe not, or maybe just. By by, uh, by by people doing more targeted advertising. I mean, Facebook's inside your head, probably. They are. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, know, I know. I know. Do you think that? Do you? Th- 
<laughs> I can't help but ask. I, you know, <laughs> you seem like you'll take the question well. Do you think that they're, because I've heard they're people say. They're listening through the phones. I, yeah. <laughs> I know. I knew I where you were going. Have better, people have better things to do, the NSA, than to yeah. listen to what Matt and Jamie I have d- to I don't, say. I don't right? know that the NSA is listening. I think it might be possible Facebook is listening. Yeah. And, and maybe Amazon, too. <laughs> yeah, maybe Amazon, too. Because people say that, like, it's crazy thing. I was just talking to my wife about how we needed ad. a new knife set. And then a new knife set shows up on Amazon, right? Yeah. You know, in, in the Amazon ads. Yeah. Um, I've heard two different theories just, on this, you know, on Yes, They're Listening, or no, your behavioral habits were gearing towards that. Yeah. They can t- that now they know that if you buy X thing and then Y thing, human behavior leads that you're going to buy the Z thing. That's what it is. Yeah. What it is. That There's a lot of human behavior. We are way more predictable creatures than people think that we are. We are so predictable. Yes. And honestly, the, you know, the searches we do and the things we're, we're doing doing they, there's a lot of that to it is there a possibility some of the data is through listening sure but if we're looking at it from the perspective of the business owner and the investor that is trying to market the things we're trying to market yeah. it does provide us with this amazing opportunity to get in front of the people we want to get in front it of. does and i'm and obviously no but none of us are saying or advocating <laughs> that facebook should be listening to us no they shouldn't be listening is. but here's the deal i'm a law-abiding citizen most of the yeah. time and so at the end of the day i if they're listening, so they're, that's their fault. They're, 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 they're going to be very bored in what I have and to say. And they're really just putting like products that. in front of you. They're really, yeah, that's why they're only listening so they can try and sell me stuff. And it's yep. likely something I said that I needed anyway, you know? Like, right. Yeah, right. <laughs> so in, what's interesting about this is that the the ad platforms today and the social media platforms, everyone has the ability to get on it. So yeah. that means everyone has the ability to get on it. You should probably be doing it, but that also means everybody has the ability to get on it. So yeah. you're competing with everybody. You are. You are. It's very affordable to get on in market right it's now. It's very affordable to get on in market. So how are you differentiating yourself in a way that makes you trustworthy that they want to choose to yeah. look at a house you're selling or... Because Im- my brand. My brand makes me brand. stand out. So bringing it all home guys Jamie <laughs> O'Connor, here we got so brands are we all have to have a brand and actually we all do have a brand and it's just you either control it Oh, your brand is so and so at gmail.com and you're the person yep. that people don't, your brand is someone that doesn't that people don't want to do business with because they're not too sure about right and they're not sure what you stand for or your brand stands as a magnet and it draws buyers and investors and um, and all people to you that you really want to attract and because your brand is scripted it's well thought out and then you can bring, blend into your brand things like online, online advertising uh, websites things like that to broadcast yourself through that brand and if you think out who you want to attract and who your air quote avatar is mm-hmm. you know meaning like ideal customer um, if you think about who that is then it'll enable you to generate a great brand and great marketing campaigns and you can use companies like Jamie O'Connor's company which is what's the name of your company? Inspired Focus Digital. Inspired Focus Digital. Yeah. And how do they get a hold of you? Through Inspired Focus is that a website? Inspired yeah. Focus? So yeah. if you go to inspiredfocusdigital.com slash DeRosa Group I will have a guide about what kind of content you could create to build your brand Inspired authority. Focus Digital forward slash DeRosa Group. Uh, yeah. that, that's awesome. Wasn't where that was out there apparently. There you go. There, there it is guys. <laughs> Check it out. Um, thank you, Jamie. Thank really you. Pleasure having you. Yes, Thank you fun. so much. Great conversation. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great and profitable week.